everybody welcome back to part 15 of the Tamiya Mosquito build well I've had a bit of a change of plan this week uh, I was going to move on and get the model uh, masked up and primed at least if not painted but I thought it would be better to actually finish the cockpit off I realized that there was quite a bit of work still to do uh, to fit the radio gear in there and the G equipment as well uh, and also get the canopy framing done. So that's what I've tackled uh, this week. So it's been a really uh, interesting week for me. I've done quite a bit of research on the uh, G system that's fitted into this particular aircraft and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit uh, later on in the video. But fitting the canopy uh, I think on any aircraft model really brings it to life. So I'll bring the camera over uh, and we'll have a look at how I finished off uh, this cockpit assembly. Okay, today I'm going to make a start with the radio uh, and G equipment. And I'm actually a little bit behind on these units. They should have gone in uh, a little bit earlier. I think I'm going to find it slightly awkward to get the uh, G indicator unit in which uh, should have gone in when I built the cockpit really. We just have to be a bit careful here as well because we've got some options in the Tamiya kit uh, between the uh, three versions offered uh, in the kit. And in the case of the version that we're building, we need uh, this combination, which is an R1155 radio receiver, uh, a G receiver, and we need a G indicator unit, which goes right back to the beginning of the instructions here on step three. So I should have done it ages and ages ago when I was building the cockpit. And actually I glued the two parts of the G indicator unit together, the two halves, which is a simple enough job in itself, but the difficulty with it is it leaves quite a nasty uh, seam line to correct. And I've done that by using some Mr. Surfacer here, just on the top surface. Doesn't match about the underside, you can't see it. Uh, but that's been done for a while, uh, a good few weeks now. So uh, that's ready to paint up. We have the uh, front of the indicator unit, which goes on like that. And that just sits behind the pilot's armour plate to the left of the navigator. So that's the first element and that's, as you can see, ready to start doing a bit of painting on that. Skipping forward to the G receiver and the radio receiver, I actually bought this set which is from Barracuda Cast and I didn't really concentrate on what I was doing I don't think because for the version that I'm doing I don't need this uh, transmitter unit, the T1154. You do for the version C uh, in the Tamiya kit, which is this one here, uh, but you don't need it for my version, so it's a little bit of a waste, I suppose. I'm only going to be able to use the receiver unit, which is this one. It's a little bit better than the Tamiya kit, but uh, maybe it's not worth the uh, extra expense of buying this set if you're building uh, either version A and B in the Tamiya kit. So I've got a spare transmitter uh, for the spares box just in case I ever build maybe a 132 scale Lancaster or something like that. This set is slightly uh, deceptive because it says that we get the uh, 1154 transmitter and the 1155 receiver which are these two resin parts but it also says, and a G indicator unit. And there isn't a G indicator unit in the set. So let's just have a look inside the packet and see what we actually get in here. So looking at the instructions, it really just does concentrate on the two versions of the radio, the transmitter and the receiver. There's nothing here about the G indicator unit. So I'm not sure what uh, Barracuda cast were trying to get over there on the uh, front of the packet. Certainly fooled me anyway. We do have a nice decal sheet 
So what we get for the uh, R1155, this is the one that we're going to be using, the uh, radio receiver. There's obviously the main unit. We've got a couple of knobs separately, a connector unit. I'm not sure where that goes. At the, uh, where it goes on the front. And we can add some cables to that. We also get three handles as well in resin. I might, in all likelihood, I'll probably uh, replace those with some very thin wire. Should be easy enough to do. I think they'll be quite difficult to clean up those in resin. If you're interested in the uh, transmitter, this is the 1154 transmitter. Again, we get separate knobs, connection unit. And that would make painting the transmitter much easier because you can paint the knobs separately, I suppose. So anyway, that's one for the spares box for me. So we've got some nice uh, sets of decals here. This looks like a revision set as well. So it should add some nice detail at least to this uh, radio receiver. So we're going to have to build the uh, G receiver unit uh, from the Tamiya kit parts. So let's get those cut off and see how that bit goes together. Then we'll have the three components of the radio and G set up on the aeroplane. We also have a piece of photo etch for the casing for the G receiver. So that just has some simple 90 degree bends on it. And then the face just uh, drops onto the front there. I'm going to leave the face separate because it's painted a slightly different colour. We've uh, got the main casing in black. So I'll be using something like a NATO black or a rubber black for that. And the face of this is in a sky or pale grey. So, just for ease of painting, I'll do those separately and leave this off. We also have a handle on this, moulded in, which is a solid handle, so I'll replace that with some wire. You just need to carefully remove the uh, moulded in handle there, just a sharp blade. Gently work through. Don't to damage any of the other detail. There's quite a lot of other detail on this part, so I don't want to damage it. And while I'm into removing bits of uh, moulding. I'll take the handle off the G indicator as well. This one's tricky because it's near to the edge of the indicator screen. So I'm going to replace the handles with some brass wire. This is 0 0.04 uh, millimetres, that is. And so I'm going to need a 0.4 drill to mark the location holes for the new handles. As always, I'll mark the location that I want to drill.
Okay, so those are the first two parts all prepared. Uh, now onto the resin. So I want to remove the main uh, radio receiver from the block. So you could see the amount of resin dust that came off just that small part and just to protect yourself I'd advise using a respirator like this, a full uh, sealed mask. Just put some fresh filters on this actually. And I use these for painting even though I've got an extraction I use these for painting as well. Uh, especially when I'm using uh, things like cellulose thinners uh, and lacquer thinners as well, which obviously I use quite a bit for the acrylic paints that I use. So I'd advise if you're doing a lot of painting, and particularly if you're working with resin and cutting it like I just did, uh, just look after yourself and get a face mask. So the small razor saw that I used at the beginning there, which is this one, I just went round all four sides just to give me the uh, edge of the part really. And then obviously I can use the cutting disc to take the part off the main block. And then in this case I'm just going to use a knife to pare the rest of the excess resin away. You can just see the line created by the first saw cut. So what we'll end up with is a nice flat surface. Rather than trying to saw all the way through, it's much harder that way to get a perfectly flat part at the bottom. Just see if we can get these handles to work. They're just not going to be easy to clean up. Uh, I think I can just do better making them as I did before in wire. This frame's really tricky to paint. It's very fine. And not going over onto the black's very difficult. But I've got a little trick to sort out any uh, little spills or marks that we make on this. Uh, with a black wash and that'll just neaten all these edges up
So the panel line wash just gets right into the corners and gives a nice straight line where I've painted the green. So any little slips that I've made, and I've made a couple, the panel line wash just tidies those up. Just going on to the faces of the radio uh, receiver and the G receiver. And just going on the instrument faces here just helps to outline the various knobs and switches and it's just easier to pick them out in the colours when we come to do that. I'm just skipping around a bit now, just waiting for parts to dry and looking for other little bits and pieces to do. So I can go on to uh, the radio receiver here. I think the first thing I'll do is to fit the decal that Barracuda supplies. Actually there's more than one for this unit. This is just some microset just to get these to settle down a little bit. The decals are going over some quite uh, raised detail. So they need something to help them settle down a little bit. So I'll just leave that microset alone for a bit just to do its work. And I think that unit's going to need a little bit of dry brushing just to bring out some of the knobs and switches on it. But uh, as I said, leave it alone, let the microset dry off and soften the decal up a little bit. Just coming back to these instrument faces, these screens. Just clean up the wash a little bit. Tamiya provide a decal for the uh, G indicator unit here but I'm not going to use it because it's showing the unit in a live state so in other words it's got a trace on it it's lit up and that's not right for a model standing uh, on the ground really so I'll just pick that instrument face out uh, with some uh, clear green, I think, just to give that impression of an instrument uh, face.
Okay, so all the detail painting's done. I'm pretty happy with the clear green on there. I think it looks a lot better than uh, a false looking decal. So uh, that's ready to go. We can start to put these things together now. I just want to get this indicator unit uh, varnish down. I glossed it to use the uh, weathering wash on it. So I just want to bring it back to a satin finish now. Okay, let's not do any more with those. I'll uh, get them assembled now and I can look to put them in the aeroplane. Okay, so our three instruments there. So uh, this first one here is the G indicator unit. This one is the G receiver, which goes on the back deck. And this is the radio receiver. So all those are ready to go in now. We can uh, bring the model over and let's see if we can get these fitted. The tricky one here is going to be the G indicator unit because it goes right down behind the pilot's seat and really it should have been fitted before the cockpit was fitted. I might struggle a bit here getting this in. Just lost the axe there. Well, it's gone in, it's in the right position, but it's very, very difficult to fit uh, at the stage that I've done it. So uh, just, uh, if you're building this yourself, follow the instructions, get that in earlier. Because that's very, very awkward. And as you can see, I've knocked the escape axe from the back of the pilot's seat. So I'm going to have to refit that somehow. Okay, managed to rescue that a bit. Okay, with the uh, radio at the back here, the receiver, 
uh, and the G uh, equipment in. I can now put together the canopy framing and that might just help us uh, protect all this detail now until the end of the build. So there's quite a few parts to the Tamiya canopy. Uh, the internal bracing and rails are all built up and then we've got transparency obviously to go over the top of that. So uh, let's get the canopy rail parts out and see how they go together. I think there's quite a bit of detail painting to do on these as well. Although these are all separate parts, I'm going to try to uh, build them up without fixing them onto the fuselage at this stage. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that, but the intention of doing that is so that it can be removed, sprung off the main fuselage once the assembly is all together, uh, and then paint it and reinstall it. I don't know whether that will work though, it might not be possible to get it out once it's uh, placed into the fuselage halves. I'm pretty sure that they're ejector pins which I'm going to have to remove. They don't appear to serve a purpose. You can see how delicate these rails are. So I'm going to tentatively see if I can dry assemble these parts uh, over the cockpit and see if it'll then ping off to paint it. Might not be possible. So the two uh, rear pieces of the framing, I could possibly get those joined together. I think it'll be too ambitious to try and do uh, the whole thing by joining this rear section to the front here, this roll bar. These are just too delicate, I think, to cope with uh, joining everything together. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just assemble the whole of the back section of the rollover cage uh, and leave this front section off. So I'll glue uh, this part together at the back. And I think I can get away with that central bar that goes along the top. Okay, I think that's going to work now. I'll just make sure that that's all well cemented. And when that's dried up, we can disassemble it and I can get it painted. We've got quite a few bits and pieces to add to this as well. So uh, a bit more work to do on this yet. Okay, so that should all be set now. We've worked it a about half an hour to 
remove these bits and pieces so just get rid of the front bar and hopefully this should pop out in one so that can all be painted that's worked it is quite a delicate uh, structure though so I've got to be careful with it this transparency at the back is to be painted green really there's just uh, a beacon at the back a clear beacon which is why Tamir have molded this uh, as a transparency Uh, so I'm just going to have to work out how to paint that separately. I'll probably paint the whole thing in the interior green. Uh, pick out the beacon in some silver. And then cover that with some clear green. I can't think of another way of doing it really. Okay. So we've got an IFF transponder there, identification friend and foe, a flare pistol I assume, um, and we've got the DF loop antenna here. So I'll prime all those up, get them painted and hopefully they'll go onto the rest of the model. You need a good brush and a bit of a steady hand to do these strips. I assume they're some sort of rubbing strip or sealing strip uh, against the canopy. But uh, whatever they are, they take some patience to touch them in. Let's try and do this beacon at the back. I think that's worked. Happy with that.
Right, so all the cage parts are ready to fit now. But uh, just going back to the G system, which was this receiver here and the display unit here with the oscilloscope uh, on it. Uh, it was a system that was originally uh, developed as a landing aid uh, for bombers primarily. Uh, but it was found when it was developed that the range was quite a bit better than expected. So it was possible to use it as a general navigation aid uh, into Europe from the UK. And it uh, first entered service with Bomber Command in 1942. The range at that time was about 350 miles. So with a range of 350 miles it could give an aircraft uh, a good navigational fix. Uh, quite a long way into Europe from bases in southern England. So in terms of how this G system worked on this particular aircraft, uh, if we have a couple of radio stations, let's say situated here in the south of England, and a target here, a position here in, let's say, northern Europe, uh, these two radio stations, Station A and Station B, A would communicate with B and in that way they would send out a radio pulse and a receiver here, let's say in an aircraft as we've got on the Mosquito, could detect, using the oscilloscope that we've seen on the model, that this distance here, from this station, is shorter than this distance here, because the time it takes for the relative signals to travel to this point uh, would be longer on Station A's signal than Station B's. So an aircraft here with a receiver on board, like we've got on our Mosquito, uh, the oscilloscope could detect the uh, time difference between the radio signal leaving station B and the one leaving station A. So there were two plots on the oscilloscope, and it would ev effectively measure the two distances that we've got here. And if you know the two distances between these two fixed points, uh, you can determine the position that you're in uh, in your aeroplane. The navigator on the aeroplane would carry a chart with a number of grid references or grids set out from these uh, stations or chains of stations were set up. Uh, and you could at any point in time, looking at the oscilloscope, do that calculation and work out exactly where you were. If you have a target here, then you could continually plot that course uh, and bring the aircraft onto the target. So it was found that that was a pretty effective uh, way of locating a target, uh, particularly at night for heavy bombers flying at night. But later on in the war it was found that the original uh, G system uh, became blocked over Northern Europe at any rate. It was still used uh, as a navigational aid over England for a time, uh, but it was found to be ineffective uh, over Europe due to jamming. And that's when other systems such as Oboe came into use uh, later on in the war. So just a bit of historical background about what we've actually got uh, in our model here. So let's uh, put this canopy frame into the model now. So hopefully, because it's all glued up as we fixed it into the model earlier on, it should now go back after painting. It's just a little bit awkward to get the back pin in. gently does it because this framework is pretty delicate. Now 
Now I'm not using any cement on this. I don't want to risk marking the cockpit work. So that's in position now. It's not going to go anywhere. So I can now fit the front rail. So that's the canopy framing. I think the method of assembling this frame without actually gluing it into the cockpit uh, and that's so that you can paint it, I think that's uh, the right way to go about that. I think trying to paint each of these parts separately and assemble them as painted items uh, would be quite a bit more difficult really. Uh, so providing that the part can be sprung out, which I've shown that it can. I think that's the best way to do it. You couldn't assemble the whole thing unpainted and attempt to uh, paint it afterwards. It would just be too uh, difficult, too complicated a shape uh, to be able to do that. So just before we finish, I want to just check uh, the fit of the uh, canopy on top of that. So Tamiya provide this part, which is virtually a one piece. It has a side window to fit, and that's just to accommodate variations in either a flat window uh, or a bulged window there at the side. Uh, so I'll fit that window for my version, and then we can just drop it on. I'm not going to be painting it uh, at this stage. I'll do that. Uh, painting when I come to do the rest of the camouflage scheme. I always do canopies like that because I find painting them off the model you can sometimes get a very slight variation in tone and it uh, becomes obvious if that happens that the canopy has been painted separately to the rest of the aeroplane so uh, I'm going to wait and paint the canopy framing uh, alongside the rest of the model. But let's just prepare this canopy first of all now when I'm handling canopies, right from the start I always wear gloves because I don't want to get any grease or finger marks on this. I don't want to have to be polishing it really and this is absolutely crystal clear. So uh, it's a fantastic piece of moulding and as you can see Tammy have provided this piece of uh, sprue here uh, to protect the top of the moulding to stop the uh, top getting scratched in the box. My version has the flat window, the side window. You can see this is the bulged version. So to uh, cut this canopy off, I like to either saw them off or use the motor tool. I'm going to be using the motor tool in this particular case. This is a very thick or large uh, sprue gate attachment here. And cutting it with a knife or using side cutters even, even if you've got sharp ones, it can uh, crack the sprue gate and it can lead to uh, crazing just at the junction of the part. Whereas using a saw or a motor tool doesn't put any pressure on the part, it just cuts through it. Uh, and it reduces the chances then of damaging the actual canopy. Of course, you've got to be careful with the motor tool that it doesn't slip, otherwise you'll completely wreck the canopy, which we don't want to do. So we've left, an all, we've left a lot of the sprue gate on there. And I'll tidy that up in a moment. We'll just get the other side window off as well. Mm -hmm. 
so we can then come in with a sander this is going to take a long time but this is much safer than using any cutting tool so close to a canopy you don't want to ruin this it's one of the main uh, features of the aeroplane fortunately there's only one sprue gate on this part which is just as well but it needs to be large because there's quite a volume of plastic to get into the mold here so uh, I'd rather have one large gate than several smaller ones I think so carefully does it coming up to the part now just switch over to a finer sanding stick And then finally just a polish. So that's nice and clean at the back. No damage done. So as I said, a much safer way of going about things. It just takes a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it to avoid uh, risking damage in this lovely uh, canopy. Now this is always uh, a bit nerve-wracking fitting clear parts together so we'll just check the fit first well as you'd expect it's absolutely perfect and the locations for these um, there are two really. There's a location at the top, along the top of the frame there. And there are a couple of very small little lugs which hold the part down at the bottom. So here goes. So all I'm going to do at this stage is just apply a tiny spot of glue down onto the two locations at the bottom of the canopy and just be careful here not to get any glue smeared onto the canopy itself of course And now the really nerve-wracking part is to get some liquid cement, this is fast setting, into this join here at the top. Now the thing with this is to make sure that your fingers are all well away from anywhere that the cement could run. Now I'm not going to apply very much to start with. So that's just wicked in i can see it going in there i think that's going to be enough i've got just enough at the top there just to uh, hold it all together this is very quick setting so that will already be uh, joined I think so I'm gonna so I'm not gonna push my luck there's no reason why that uh, shouldn't be perfectly sound as long as we leave it alone let it set properly and uh, I can breathe again Okay, so that's all 
uh, set up. No mishaps with that. As I said, it would absolutely ruin the uh, appearance of the model if uh, you damage this canopy at all. I think it's one of the first things that anybody would look at uh, when viewing the model. So uh, getting this bit wrong is a major setback, I think. Now, I've heard in various reviews that this canopy is such a good fit that it doesn't actually require any cement. Uh, so I'll just test that theory now. Well, it's definitely good enough. So uh, that's a big step and it's a part of the build that I really was a bit uh, nervous about. Uh, you could, as I said, you could easily ruin the model at this stage. The way that Tamiya have moulded this canopy and the internal framing, doing the internal framing separately, uh, is a much more realistic way of dealing with this. All the other models that I've ever come across, really, of the Mosquito, uh, requires you to build or paint all these inner framings, usually from the inside of the canopy, which is quite fiddly, really. Uh, this is a much easier way of uh, achieving that see-through look uh, onto the inner framing. So that's just a temporary fit, and with that I'm going to leave the model for this week. Uh, I'll get some photographs, uh, give that canopy a bit of a dust off, and uh, we'll see where we go from here. Okay, so that's it for this week for another video. And really, I've no more excuses now. I've done as much as I can uh, on the airframe and I'm going to have to set to and mask this all up. And that's going to be quite a job. I'm going to have to think about how I film painting a big model like this. Uh, I'll have to go back to my uh, Vulcan videos and see how I did that because it's a similar size sort of model to the uh, 72 scale Vulcan that I built earlier on in the year. But uh, all that work's going to take quite a bit of time and I've got some other work to do uh, away from the shed uh, for a couple of weeks. So I'm not going to be able to do it for next Friday or probably the Friday after that. But what I will do for next week is uh, finish off the ordinance. Uh, it's just another day's work really so I'll get that done for next week and if you saw the uh, review of the MDC resin and etched brass bombs they're the ones that I'm going to be uh, building for the model so I'll get those done in the next few days so that's it for now everybody I'll get back to you as quick as I can uh, as soon as I've worked out how I'm going to do the next step of the build and when I'm going to be able to fit that in around all the other work that I've got to do outside the shed so if you switch your notifications on, uh, you'll get to know straight away when the next part's coming up. Uh, in the meantime, everybody, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Other work permitting. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.